Uh, Build Equinox manufactures the CERV smart ventilation system in central Illinois at its 100% solar power facility, which is on its way to becoming a zero energy capable facility. The CERV is the first smart ventilation system for residents with active monitoring and control of indoor air quality, measuring carbon dioxide and total volatile organic compounds, that's VOCs. Uh, with the CERV's IAQ sensors, filtered fresh air is delivered to your client's home when they need it most. Uh, the CERV also saves energy with its efficient heat pump energy exchange technology. Not only that, it allows the CERV to actively heat or cool and dehumidify incoming fresh air. This makes the CERV ideal for any climate, whether hot, humid, or cold. CERV ICE connects to the CERV online, making it even smarter. This enables online monitoring and control of the uh, equipment from any internet connected device and provides information on the home's indoor air quality impact on occupant health, cognition, cognition and sleep. Don't just ventilate your client's home, make their house a healthy home with CERV smart ventilation. All right, welcome everybody to using a web-based home energy rating score for improved energy efficiency and or lead success. Uh, this session is uh, brought to you by uh, Ecotrope who we have on today, um, our instructors Ziv, Nick, and uh, Rob, all working at Ecotroop uh, for quite a bit of time, all with a ton of experience um, uh, in, in energy efficiency, in design and engineering between the three of them. Um, this course is approved for one hour in continuing education units and is approved for lead AP homes, so you'll be getting that sent directly to you. And I forgot to introduce myself, apologize. Uh, I am the moderator, my name is Brett Little, and I am the executive director here at the Green Home Institute. Uh, so now with that, uh, Ziv, I apologize, we are ready for you to take it away. Wonderful, so um, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ziv Rosenblum, I'm the uh, CEO of uh, Ecotrop, and with me are uh, Rob Solicito which is our uh, uh, customer success manager, which is our code name for uh, the guy that uh, deals with all our new clients, ramping up, making sure that uh, every single uh, client we have is, is happy. And also uh, Nick Sisler, which are one of our um, founders and lead engineers that is um, um, one of the brains behind the technology that we use. So. Today, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about, to talk about uh, cloud-based technology. It's one of the key things that uh, we do in Nicotrop. Um And to do so, we're going to spend a few minutes just uh, uh, presenting, talking about or presenting the, uh, the context in, in which we, are, we operate, uh, talking about the HERS, the uh, ResNet industry. And then um, uh, that's going to be by Rob. And then I'm going to give you a quick overview about the company, what we've been doing, uh, where we're going, um, grow to date, etc. Um, we then jump directly to uh, talk about the, uh, um, um, you know, the the advantages of uh, of uh, uh, cloud-based technology and focus on on four key areas, maybe even three. It's the uh, it's around the uh, the efficiency of the rating process, around the uh, um, ability to make better decisions, and ability to sell green or to sell energy efficiency to buyers. Uh, we're going to do that, and then uh, we're going to give you a demo. Uh, now, we already know is our system, so we're going to show you Ecotrop, but um, um, I'm sure there are other systems out there that pretty much can do the same thing. And uh, uh, But again, we will use our system as a way to, uh, to demonstrate what we are talking about. Uh, with that, I will start with Rob Solcido, who's going to talk about HERS and uh, ResNet. Uh, thanks, Zip. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's Rob Salcido here, uh, coming to you live from Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we're gonna, I'm going to lead you through a brief introduction and uh, background on the ResNet and the HERS index, which is pretty much the primary driver, you know, behind the Ecotrope software, um, softwares, I should say, and tools. And then, you know, the founding for, for Lead for Homes is a, is a driving metric for it. So what is the HERS index? Basically, in a nutshell, the HERS index is the industry standard for measuring energy efficiency of the home. It is nationally recognized and widely adopted. So it is, as you can consider, it is the miles per gallon rating of a home, kind of similar to a car. So in a one-number metric, it describes the energy efficiency of the home. 
And this is a, it, the rating is, is it's, gonna, it's an asset rating. So what that means is it is rating the home and not the occupants of the home. So it's the operational characteristics of the rating are based on the DOE Building America research on national averages for home, oper, you know, occupant operation. So this way, every home is rated off the same operational characteristics based on the climate zone they are in. So with this index, it allows homes to be compared to each other based on one energy efficiency metric. So talking about that metric, the kind of the standard is between, a, the, the metric is a zero to 100 is where most homes will lie, where 100 represents a code home, a code minimum home built to the 2006 IECC. And a zero, so 100 is a 2006 IECC home, a zero would represent a net zero energy home. So there is your metric. So most homes are going to delight in between those two. Now, you can, it's possible to have a, a HERS index above 100. So if there's an existing home that's not quite built to code, you're going to see a HERS index of 120, 130, and above. So ResNet determines that uh, existing, a typical existing home is based on 130, which is a DOE uh, stated measure for the existing home. So it kind of gives you an idea of where the, uh, an existing, a typical existing home, and, and there could be a wide range around that as well. Um, and like I said before, it is a nationally most widely recognized uh, energy metric uh, that is recognized by uh, quite a few government agencies. Um, and a big thing with the HERS index is it is fuel agnostic. And what I mean by that is uh, if you have mid-efficiency heating equipment um, and gas, switching over to a mid-efficiency electric system would, should, and it pretty much it should, it could range, uh, alter a little bit, but should score the exact same. So there's, you know, this was a very important part of the development of the HERS index calculations that you couldn't game uh, the, the HERS index by, oh, I'm going to switch from a mm. gas equipment to electric and get a better HERS index. So that is, that's basically in a nutshell. The HERS index allows homes, the big idea is allows homes to be compared based on energy efficiency. So having understand that, what is the value to builders and in the real estate market, what is this value of the HERS index? Well, like I said, it allows a builder to differentiate their, their homes based on energy efficiency. Uh, our homes are built to a HERS index of 40, where our competition is built to a 60. So our homes are showing much more efficient when it comes to the building and the construction and the inspections. Uh, the HERS index allows, shows how can I show, uh, gain certifications for ENERGY STAR DOE Zero Energy Ready Home or Lead for Home Certification, the HERS index is the main metric behind the certification for those programs. So it's recognized by these programs, EPA, DOE, and uh, USGBC as the metric to use to start, you know, to show certification uh, for energy efficiency programs. And, and a lower HERS index can command a higher price on a home. So that is the huge benefit of building to a higher efficiency and then showing that through a third-party HERS index uh, calculation is here's our home, here's the higher, uh, here's the better HERS index, here's where it demands a better price for that home. And another part is utility programs offer rebates based on a, min uh, a minimum HERS index. So the utilities see the value in the HERS index as well because they base their rebates on a specific HERS index score. The better HERS index, the better the rebate. So, and then real estate agents can use the HERS index in their marketing procedure, uh, brochures and in their marketing materials that they're pushing for. Here's a way to measure a home based on its energy efficiency. And you kind of look at it as, it, you know, it's now part of the, the PITI, the, the, the Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance. Add the E onto that. Now you have energy efficiency, so it's PITIE, where the, they're, they're pushing for that, that, that overall adds to the overall value of the home. The appraisal market is getting into the business of recognizing the HERS index is because the home can now appraise better based on a lower HERS index. So that's, uh, you know, that's another big value of the HERS index is, as we said, lower value, lower HERS index, better value for the home. And the builders, they love it because it requires multiple inspections, a pre-drywall rough final 
by third-party HERS raters to verify that all, you know, insulation is done correctly, it's tested to be airtight, duct leakage is minimal, and this is a third-party inspection. And these raters are subject to regular field and file QA requirements. So there's a lot of, of recognition and consistency and transparency when it comes to the HERS index. So when we talk about the HERS index and code compliance, now the International Code Council has recognized the HERS index is now it's part of a, it's a new compliance pathway. Uh, before 2000, in 2009, 2012, there were a performance pathway and a prescriptive pathway with a trade-off pathway. Now in 2015, IECC has recognized what they call the energy rating index, which as it stands now is simply the HERS index as a compliance pathway. And each compliant, they specify that each climate zone has a specific HERS index that is used to meet code compliance. So a home must meet uh, X HERS index in climate zone one or two or three, and it passes. Um, and this was based off a 2009 IECC prescriptive uh, home with a more than normal efficient equipment. And this was developed, these HERS indices limits for the 2015 ERI were based on a study by a PNNL uh, to, to those who set the limits. Now, having said that, a lot of states have modified and uh, amended the, the HERS index that must be required to pass the 2015 IECC, and we're seeing more and more of that as states and jurisdictions adopt the 2015 IECC. So, uh, so when you look at it, the HERS index is a performance-based approach, but what makes it uh, valuable in the, phase, in the part with code compliance is in a performance-based approach, you cannot gain credit for on-site power production, where the ERI allows that. So if you have a home that's not meeting the performance path in the 2015 IECC, but it does have on-site power production to allow that, you could you take you know you make use of the ERI that maybe now that reaches that pushes you below the limit where that home now complies with the 2015 IECC. So it's it's kind of canal hers index co-compliance are really joining forces and working together to allow homes to be com show code compliance. So now we talked about the HERS index, what is ResNet? So ResNet is the Residential Energy Services Network, which is the governing body that manages and controls and, and, and the HERS index. So basically ResNet is a not-for-profit membership corporation and it's governed by a ResNet board of directors. It was founded in 1995 and its task was develop to develop nine national standards for home energy ratings and create a market for this home energy rating system and the energy mortgages. So that's, and in 2002, it became a 501c3 not-for-profit corporation. So that's as, as it's operating right now. Um, President's a nationally recognized standards making body for building energy efficiency ratings and certification systems. So it's, its strength is it's a consensus-based uh, standards and amendment process where it's transparent review and formal public review of, and comment process. So what this means is anyone has the ability to comment, change, or, or make uh, introductions to new standards and, 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 and be part of the process. So it's very open, it's transparent, and that's what helps it make it widely adopted. And now that there are ANSI standards for the for home energy rating system, this was a big part of the process. Um, Architects, builders, contractors, and federal agencies all recognize ResNet, DOE, EPA, and IRS. So it's widely recognized. Um, and it's set up, so part of the process, it set up a standards management board to regulate the process of you know, standards development for ANSI approval. So there are committees for ethics and appeals. Uh, standards Development Committee, SDC 200, is education, training, certification. SDC 300 is just for technical standards and SDC 900 is for quality assurance. So these committees continuously update and maintain the standards that, that are the governing, the governing control over the, how the HERS index is tested or calculated, the process flow to, for, for the testing, and then the quality assurance and, and ethical standards that, that, that it relates to. So it's continuously being updated. And so having said all that, what is, the, what is the measure of the success of the HERS index? So to date, according to the ResNet website, over 206,000 homes were rated in 2016, and that's up 16,000 from 2015. And to this date, 2 million home, almost 2 million homes have been rated. 
and the average Hertz index nationally was 61 in 2016. And that's, that's pretty good compared to 62 in 2015. So other successful measures, now that the ERI, Energy Rating Index, is now part of the IECC code. The HERS index is recognized by um, numerous utility rebate programs as the measure for the rebate threshold. Energy Star, DOE, Zero Energy Ready Home, Lead for Homes utilize the HERS index, and it's widely recognized as the energy efficiency label uh, across the country. And my final words about the success of the HERS is some of our latest technical updates is we worked, we, uh, we just passed the domestic hot water distribution efficiency and added drain, drain water heat recovery to the standard. There's an index adjustment factor coming down, which will normalize uh, the HERS index across home size. Uh, we're starting to recognize solid state lighting, LEDs, uh, as adding a little additional benefit over CFLs. Um, we're addressing the uniform energy factor for radio hot, hot water hot water heaters, which is current, it was the energy factor. Now there's a uniform energy factor, so we need to work on that to come to uh, how that's going to be entered and what calculations need to change. There's a multifamily 305 standard being developed right now that will hopefully become ANSI standard in a year or two, but must, it's still in the early phases of ANSI development process. And then the standard 380 uh, passed answered stand, ANSI standard 380 for measuring air leakage and duct leakage. So we're, like I said, we're constantly, when I say we, I am part of the SDC 300, uh, 300 technical committee, and this is the things we've been working on. So. Uh, that's the resident HERS index in a nutshell, and Ziv, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, as you guys can see, uh, um, Rob and we are very and us are very passionate about uh, uh, resident and HERS in general. Uh, we see it as a quick growth area for the entire industry, and uh, we try to be a big part of that. Um, you know, we are board members in ResNet, uh, part of committees. Uh, running committees, um, it's very exciting. Now, talk more about Ecotop. Uh, we are a Boston-based company. Uh, all we do is cloud-based products. Uh, we've been around for about seven years now, and the uh, roots to what we do goes to uh, MIT. Uh, my partner uh, is a professor at MIT, developed technology for actually for NASA, and uh, uh, we've been seeing a lot of similarities between you know, spaceships and buildings and energy. So we took the technology, applied it to uh, the construction market, and um, um, and to make it robust enough, we actually had to develop our own hourly-based analysis for energy, develop a lot of the capabilities that we use today that, uh, that allow us to uh, take advantage of the cloud-based uh, uh, technology capabilities. And um, um, in, a, in the last year or so, we've been focusing mainly on the uh, rating industry as a way to go into others, and uh, we've been growing pretty fast. Um, today, about 40% of the rating market use, um, I mean, clients that do uh, over 40% of the rating market use Ecotop. Uh, they're not fully converted yet, uh, but they are in the process, and you can see on the right, um, the type of growth we've been having in the last uh, in the last 12 months. Um, Ecotop is certified by Resnet to do HERS, Energy Star, ICC, and we are even lead compliant, which we're going to show you uh, as we go to the demo. So that's about Ecotop. Uh, moving on to talk about you know the uh, um, how do we see the uh, uh, web-based technology. So um, when we vision what cloud-based technology can do to the market, we see about three key areas. One is around the rating process efficiency in general, you know, making the process much more efficient and give more control to the, uh, to the raters, which at the end of the day is translated into a more accurate, less errors, faster process. At the end of the day, also cost less money to do. That's on the rating process. Um, on the other side, it's also uh, about the decision, that kind of extension from just the rating. You know, it's not about just seeing if a house meets code or not. It's about making smarter decisions, like what will be the best way to build, design and build this house that will um, uh, uh, you know, get us to our result in the most cost-effective way. Web-based technology, cloud-based technology can help us do that. And then finally, it's around sales. You know, um, so you end up building energy-efficient house or multi-family. 
And then the question is, how do you justify the premiums? How do you, you know, if you compete against the house that was built 10 years ago, how do you get users or buyers or homeowners to think beyond just the sticker price? Understand what we call the true cost of ownership and understand that it's not only the uh, uh, more energy efficient, more comfortable choice to use the energy efficient home, it's also the right financial choice. And again, cloud-based technology can help us there. Now, um, I want to dive into the uh, uh, first on the on the rating side. You know, we spoke about efficiency, about making things faster and better, a bit more flexibility. And uh, I'm going to speak specifically about items that, that lead us there. But before that, I want to mention one one key thing about uh, um, cloud-based technology. And the advantages come from two different areas. One relates to technology itself. For example, you can because it's a cloud-based technology, you can log into the system from any machine anywhere. You don't have to install anything. That's the key premise of the technology. But aside from that, um, there are also a set of tools, development tools, that were created around cloud-based technology that are, today, they are the best in the world, which means that um, you can use advanced capabilities that you cannot use anywhere else. For example, if you're looking for a house that you rated two, three years ago, it can take you uh, um, several minutes uh, maybe a lot of minutes to, uh, to to look for that in you know the old folder structure that existed in the past. Using cloud-based advanced tools can take you seconds, and Nick will show you that. So, where we see the impact coming on on the uh, rating industry is first is in the in the automatic updates. I mean, there is no installation needed on any on any device any time, and if you discover a bug, new report, new functionalities coming in, you don't have to reinstall anything, which takes a lot of time um, um, to our clients. Um, we talk about um, um, productivity features. This is where you can do things faster. You can automatically sign. You can automatically do QA. And you can do different things that, again, Nick will show you in a second. But our survey showed that uh, average rater using cloud-based technology can do ratings in 11 minutes uh, less time per rating, uh, which is really meaningful uh, for someone that you know does rating in, in 40 or 45 minutes. Um, the system is more adaptable, meaning that systems can talk to one another. So there's no need to uh, have communication. Oh, to, do, to do double data entry between systems, so you know, um, a CRM system or scheduling system can send information to the rating system and then read the rating back without human intervention. That saves time, reduces errors. Uh, uh, that, that, that this item, and then there is more control. You know what's going on. You can make sure that uh, uh, you know people in the field don't make changes. So R15 wall stays R15 simply because you just have more control. Um, and we talked about working on any computer anywhere. Um, a lot of our users actually use Ecotrop in the field, um, using iPads, using the phones. Very convenient, saves a lot of time. And the last thing is the support, which is a key item. Um, because it's a web-based technology, companies like Ecotrop don't need to wait for people to contact uh, the hotline to report problems. We monitor people, be, uh, people behavior continuously to find there or to find problems. So if someone has a problem, we get a flag being raised, and we can approach them proactively and, uh, and solve the problem. And it saves tons of time to our, to our users. So with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, do a quick demo. Again, we're going to show you Ecotrop, uh, but, but just the features that we implemented, uh, just to be able to illustrate the point. Great, thanks, Ziv. Uh, hi, folks. This is uh, Nick. I'm excited to be talking to you all today. Um, so as you can see, hopefully I've switched over to my screen, uh, which is showing a web browser, uh, which hopefully you can see. Um, so as, as Ziv mentioned, uh, the system is a web application, which means you can access it from anywhere with, a, with a, any computer that has an internet connection. Um, you just need to go to the app and log in, which I will do right now. So um, just just to mention, fo folks are even using, like I said, uh, you can use it anywhere. Folks are even using it in the field, on a job site, um, li literally anywhere. 
uh, people are using it on their phones or on tablets or, or any connected device. Um, as I've mentioned, it being cloud-based uh, allows, allows us to do much quicker iterations. Each time you go to the software, you'll be getting the most recent version. You don't have to deal with any downloads or anything like that. Um, also, there's no, there's no files. All of, the, all of the information is stored on a secure database. So if you log into your organization's account, you are getting the most recent information and it's shared uh, with all of your colleagues. Um, great. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a list of all of the projects that, are, that me, John Smith, is working on. Um, I want to quickly be able to show you how we can search through some of these projects. So if I wanted to look at just projects that John is the writer on, I can do that. And then if I want to filter down a little bit further to just projects where Great Southern Homes is the builder, I can do that very quickly. Um, now I'll open up one of, one of these projects to show you some of the other functionality. Um, so one problem a lot of rating companies were having before cloud-based software was available was with their component libraries, which are information about different wall types or uh, furnaces, air conditioners, et cetera, where they store that efficiency information. Um, they would try and have like a synced library across the organization, but it was really difficult because they'd be having this information on stored on different computers and every, every once in a while they'd try and sync them up, but it would, it would be difficult. Sometimes people would make changes that, that they couldn't, you know, the senior people at the company couldn't keep track of. So now, now that all this information is stored in the cloud, it's much easier. They're all seeing the same information in the same place. Um, and there's also some additional functionality that allows them to, to manage that with more confidence. So I'll show quickly an example of that. Um, in the system, there's the ability for uh, certain users, we call them library curators, to verify certain library entries. Um, and you can do that when I click on an entry, I have the option to verify it here. Um, what that means is once, once an entry has been verified, no one else can edit it or delete it. Um, so you know it's going to stick around and it's going to stay consistent. This is really valuable for folks that are doing quality assurance. Um, so if I'm looking, if I'm a QA person and I'm looking at a, at a design that someone's ready to have their final inspection on, I can look and see, based on the ones that are highlighted in green, which options have been verified. And so I know that those are going to be accurate and consistent, and it can reduce the time I have to spend inspecting this house. Um, so, so as a writer, you know that R15 wall is R15 wall, and, and you don't have to go and track it on every project because it's kind of been locked, and it's a, kind of a major time saver. Yeah, possible. yeah absolutely. Um, on a similar note, uh, another valuable feature for folks has been quality assurance checks. Um, and these are now automated, and, the, and you can see just a taste of them over on the right. Um, previously, when folks were doing quality assurance, they would manually calculate uh, ratios of areas or do other checks. So we worked with a lot of those folks and helped develop automated checks, um, which are right here to the right. For instance, I will drop down to see the, all the checks we have for the HERS rating. So you can see most of them are green. We have a high level, we have a warning icon here. Um, and I can see that something's wrong with this average ceiling height check. You can see average ceiling height should be between seven and 15 feet, but was 90. This is either ratio between condition volume and floor area. So I know something's wrong with either the volume or the floor area. So I'm gonna click over to the section where we have that information. I see we have a 1700 uh, square foot house. Um, but the condition volume seems a little high. It's 160,000 square feet, which, which doesn't really make any sense for a 1,700 square foot house. So I think someone just accidentally pressed an extra zero here. I'm going to remove that zero, uh, hit update, and we'll see that this warning will go away. We'll get greens across the board for the HERS score, for the HERS index. 
checks and we'll be we know we're we're ready to to submit that rating um, great so another another thing people had to do before cloud-based software existed was this sort of uh, file management uh, specifically between like a rating company and a provider company which is uh, something ResNet has set up so if I wanted to share this with my provider before I would like usually email them or folks had other systems like Dropbox or something now I can just uh, at the click of a button, share it with them. Um, it'll show up in their account and they'll get a notification to, to check it out and inspect it. Great, uh, finally the last deliverable for most ratings is reporting. So I'll quickly show the reporting in the system. Um, I'm gonna show you the, the home energy rating certificate. Um, looks pretty nice, that's, that's part of the abilities that cloud-based systems give us is we can pull in these newer technologies and newer libraries to make things look pretty good. Um, the system allows folks to put in their logos so they can even put in a builder logo in addition to their rating company logo. Uh, we allow users to upload their signatures uh, so they can sign right in Ecotrope at the click of a button. This you know saves them a lot of time. Previously they were using Adobe to sign things or printing things out, signing and scanning. Uh, and then finally, they can email these reports directly from the system instead of having to write a separate email, attach it to that email, uh, and send it that way. So that's, that's what I want to cover with the cloud-based rating software. I will turn it back to uh, Ziv, who's going to walk us through the next, next phase of the presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, last thing I want to show is the, uh, is the ability to kind of communicate between systems. As I said, cloud-based is a usually open system. Same thing, for example, with Ticotop, uh, we talk with other systems. In that case, for example, there is a system called Dash, which is uh, it's, it's a um, very complicated, um, uh, very functional um, scheduling system. But then information, so a rater wants to rate a house, information exists in Dash, Dash will, Dash will, Dash will send that information automatically to Ecotop, so the rater gets to the field, the information is there. Then um, once they do the rating, information goes back to Dash, everything is automatic, um, saves tons of time. Other system is Access, does the same thing, send information back and forth to Ecotop. That's on the rating side. Again, the idea is uh, save time, make things go, go faster, there's more control. Um, at the end of the day, save, save, save all of us uh, uh, money. Um, with that, I want to go into the kind of the design, the design process. How can we make better decisions using uh, cloud-based technology? cloud-based uh, features. So I will start with, with kind of an example and then Nick will show you how it looks in reality. Assuming, uh, let's say, um, uh, you work with a um, production builder, works in a certain uh, subdivision or community or division, and um, they build homes with a certain spec to meet code, um, a certain type of windows, wall installation, mechanical equipment, etc. And that design, let's say this is that design, as a, as a capital cost, how much it costs to buy all these components, and then also performance cost that they need in order to meet code, which is fine. But then let's say there is a new code come in um, that now the design doesn't meet code. And it's a problem. Uh, they might hire you guys, maybe you guys make the decision, but what will typically happen is that uh, um, the builder will end up throwing all the home, uh, uh, home that, that, that you know there's a custom home but end up spending more money put more money in the problem maybe build putting a better window system wall system more insulation mechanical probably a combination um, but that's but that that is where ecotop come or cloud based can come in because that's not the only I mean option to uh, meet code 
we have several options, you know, uh, uh, things that might have be on the uh, shelf or things that we heard about, you know, there might be some different window types that we can uh, uh, use, different wall types, roof types, mechanical equipment. And the question is what set of, what combination of these elements will get us to our code in the most cost effective way? And CloudBase, Design right can do that. It can take all your options and instead of looking at one option at a time, look at all your options and showing you every dot of yours is a different combination and show you what's going to be the performance of every one of these uh, combinations. So then you make, can, can make smarter decisions say, say, you know, why don't I go, you know, let's say I'm, I, I just want to be the most cost effective person in that neighborhood. You might go to the left and down and just select a design that's just below the code line that gets you to where you want to be. Um, alternatively, if you want to be the most uh, energy efficient person but still affordable, you might want to go down and say, I was about, I'm, I'm already spending X, maybe I can, can spend the same amount just to become more energy efficient and differentiate myself over there. But again, the cloud-based technology shows you all that and shows you all your options. Uh, with that, that, that's the theory. Now maybe I let Nick show you quickly how it looks, how it looks in practice. Great, thanks Viv. Uh, hope, hopefully you all can see my screen again. Um, so now we're looking at uh, the sort of optimization version of, of Ecotrope software. Um, you can see it looks pretty similar. Um, one advantage with the cloud is data can, we can add plugins to software, add new features to software, and we can build it so that it can use the same data. So we're actually able to both between the rating software and the optimization software, we can share data. As uh, so you'll see, as I mentioned, this software looks pretty similar. A uh, few things that we've added. One thing you'll notice on the top right is incentives. Uh, those can be taken into account during this whole analysis, um, and, the, and they will be in this example that I'll show. And then the functionality I'm going to focus on, uh, we call variations. Um, so I'll go click on this button here. Um, and this is where we'll see and we'll configure all of the different options that we're going to look at. So you can see we have slabs, walls, uh, glazings or windows, doors, roofs, etc. And I've gone ahead and checked off a few different options for each that we'll look at. Um, and then you can see at the bottom that just with those options, we already have 972 variations. So with previous software, you might have to, and maybe some of you have done this, go through one at a time and try a bunch of different software or different uh, options, keep track of that information in a spreadsheet or something like that, and it's just impossible for you to keep track of everything. But uh, now with cloud-based software, we can look at all of that pretty quickly, and I have that prepared on another tab here. Um, so this is similar chart to what Ziv was showing. Uh, we have, except instead of annual utility costs, costs on the vertical axis, I've chosen to use uh, lead credits here, or lead points. Um, so we have lead on the vertical axis. We have the cost of the energy components of the house on the horizontal axis. Yeah. I mean, uh, just, just one. Uh, what we skipped is the, is the step where we let the computer run this permutation. Sure. Right? So uh, maybe you want to just press the button. So we didn't press the button to run the permutations. I uh, just wanted to save the time. It takes about a minute or two. But at the end of the day, we get the chart that Nick is talking about. Thanks, Dave. Um, so I'll just cancel this. Uh, great. So, uh, so in addition to lead, we can also look at her score and energy bills, energy consumption. Um, now, each each one of these points represents a different possible design that we could build. Um, the star in the middle here is is the star in this example that the builder was building today, and we can see pretty quickly that we can move over here to the left and pick this other design where we're getting the same number of lead credits, but we're saving more than $3,000 in the upfront cost. Now, this is a this is a production builder, so you know costs are pretty tight. They're trying to be very cost efficient. With a custom builder, that number could be much, much higher on a bigger house. Um, 
we could also uh, spend just a little bit more money and get three more lead points. So maybe if you're just on the cutoff between uh, lead gold and lead platinum or something like that, this could make the difference. You know, you spend a little bit more money and you get that higher certification. Or, and this is, a, this is the option that's popular with a lot of people, we can do a combination of both. We can get two more lead points and we can lower our costs, in this case by uh, almost $3,000. Um, another thing we can do here is, is if we want to take in, you know, different dimensions in, into, can, into play, we can also look at code, code analysis. So if the, code, if the local code for us is ICC 2015, I can check this box and filter out all of the designs that won't meet code. You'll see we've lost this low cost design that was a lead 20. Um, I can also uh, look at the buffer for code. So we can pick designs that give us a sufficient buffer. You can see this top one, which is highlighted in green, gives us at least a 10% buffer for code. So we know, you know, if the duck blaster test or something comes in a little higher than we expected, uh, we'll still meet code and we'll still get our certificate of occupancy. Um, so finally, I'm going to unfilter these again. We can compare all of these on a side-by-side -side basis and see pretty detailed, detailed information about each possible design. Um, so at the, at the top here, once, once it loads, we'll see, we'll see the HERS score, we'll see uh, financial information such as the upfront capital costs, the cost after incentives, annual energy bills, and, and payback, which I know a lot of people are interested in. Um, for instance, you can see the, that slightly more expensive option is actually a one-year payback only. So in addition to getting us those higher lead credits, it's going to be a good investment for the buyer. It's going to pay back very quickly. Um, as we scroll down, we see uh, annual consumption. We can even see CO2 emissions pr produced by each design. And then uh, the equivalent, you know, to put it into context, we can even look at the equivalent trees that would need to be planted or cars that would need to be converted to hybrids to offset each of these designs, the, the carbon emissions of each of those designs. And then, of course, we can see the energy breakdown, the consumption breakdown, and the different uh, components that go into each system, so different roofs, uh, different walls, different glazing and equipment. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the child can make sense? Uh, uh, no, no, no. I, th I think, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will. Send it back to me? Yeah, I'll send it back to Ziv. Okay. So that was on the on the design side. How can you use the uh, uh, kind of more advanced cloud-based technology to make better design choices? We just show you a glimpse of what we can. We didn't we didn't go into the, all the financial analysis and some other stuff that makes uh, uh, sense and uh, cool and uh, fun to play with. But uh, um, I want to move on to the other area where we vision um, cloud-based helping us. It's on the on the sales side. And the question there is is how can we explain to uh, buyers? the value of energy efficiency. I mean, in, the, in the end of the day, it costs, typically costs more money, but there are benefits, and uh, um, many buyers would like to understand the financial benefits. And, 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 do, and many people talk about the trade-off. You know, you spend more money, you get more energy efficiency, more comfort. We don't, in many, we actually don't think that's the case, because if you can uh, look at, uh, at the amount you're actually spending on homes, it's typically um, going to be more cost-effective to uh, use energy-efficient homes, and I can speak about some of the tests we were doing around that. Um, but first, to speak about the concept. So we, we have a concept that we use called true cost of ownership, and means that um, when you use the house, I mean, there is a sticker price that is translated into mortgage, but that's not the only thing. There is, of course, the utility spending, the maintenance spending, uh, that translate into what you're going to spend on a monthly basis, the true cost of ownership. And uh, as you can see in the example below, although a house might cost, the sticker price might be higher, if it's energy efficient, let's say it's a house that's built to today's code versus a house that was built 10 years ago, when incorporate utilities, when incorporate maintenance, in about 8 out of 10 homes, the actual the, uh, true cost of ownership of a new house 
or a more energy efficient house versus just cold house will be actually less. And the question, how do you show that in an easy way to your clients? And uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to, you know how we do that in a second. But uh, before that, I want to share with you uh, uh, a study that was done um, by a company called uh, uh, High Start Group about a year ago, or maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and they were testing home buyers. They were about to buy homes, and they presented to them a new energy efficient house versus a used house, different sticker prices. Um, and they, were and, they, and they were testing the willingness of where people are willing to buy new, uh, the new energy fit house or the used house. And, and you can see that without talking about true cost of ownership, just looking at sticker price, which most people, that's what people do today, 59 prefer the new house. For the same people, once yes, they switch that into a true cost of ownership perspective, suddenly 90% of the people were living toward buying the energy efficient house. It makes perfect sense. You get a better house, new house, a more comfortable house, and it costs less. So that's it's a big, it's a big, it's a big market transformation. Um, so with that, I want to. Uh, give it back to Nick. Can I show you uh, uh, a quick manifestation? How do we translate that into products? Great, thanks, Dev. Uh, so, quickly, I'll demonstrate the True Cost of Ownership app. Um, this app is designed to be used, like in the model home of a of a community, of a production builder community, or on a website uh, for a builder. Um, this is this is the, the UI for what it looks like. First, we define this quick three-step process. We define our new home. On um, this example, we have a couple different models that they could pick from. Um, we The sale price is usually yeah. set in stone, but the salesperson will sometimes change that. Yeah. Then we quickly define a used home. So let's say there's a slightly bigger 20-year-old house down the street that's selling for uh, $500,000. Yeah. So $52,000 cheaper than, than the new house. Yeah. And we can yeah. plug in whatever financing assumptions that, that the buyer might have. Uh, once we do that, we're ready to go. Think about the uh, the context here is that uh, um, you have, uh, let us say it's a production builder with uh, um, with a demo house, and then you have the uh, buyer comes in, they, they go around the house, they love the house, but then they might have an MLS printout in their pocket saying, you know, your price is this, he, you know, the, uh, the homes down the street that cost so much less. And this is where salespeople are using this kind of uh, functionality in order to uh, um, Kind of convey the message that energy efficiency is actually good, good for you. Great, yeah. So we can quickly see what what our true cost of ownership is going to be for each of these houses. So what what the buyer will actually pay in monthly costs once they move into this house, and it's actually for the used home, it's going to be two hundred forty five dollars more per month to live in that home, even though we're starting out at a fifty two thousand dollar lower sales price. And the reasons for that are, are highlighted in the graph. Um, we have significantly lower energy costs and significantly lower maintenance costs, which more than offset the additional mortgage and taxes that they'll pay in the new house. Um, so that's that's the True Cost of Ownership app really quickly. Um, we're running short on time, so I will turn it back over to Ziv. Yeah. So uh, I think that, that that's it on our end. Um, I think, Brett, we're going to open that to questions. Hey, everybody. Yeah, um, we've got definitely got some time for questions. We've got questions piling up. Um, before we get to those questions, I'm going to make sure that I cover um, the green building certification uh, tie-ins, uh, as promised, as well as lead V4. Um, so I'm going to go through that real briefly for everybody just to make sure that, you know, you understand that completely. And then we'll definitely get to uh, some of these questions that are coming in and, and feel free to put more in. So real quick here, starting uh, with a focus on lead building design and construction version for homes. Um, so I'm talking uh, single family homes, single family attached, um, both new and major gut rehabs. Uh, along with um, up to multifamily mixed-use homes that are 
up to five stories um, with mixed use or non mixed use space. That's what we're talking about here with this program. Um, and that's what we're talking about here with LEED. So the very first one is the minimum energy performance credit, uh, which is a requirement. And so every single project, whether they're going performance or prescriptive in LEED, must have a validated HERS index rating um, on the uh, National Registry. Uh, we didn't talk about the National Registry, but you can go online and you can go to the HERS index website, ResNet, and you can look at a National Registry of all these uh, 2 million plus homes that are up there, um, depending on privacy or not. Those all must be listed, so therefore they must have a, uh, a HERS index rating um, on them. Um, next, uh, so yeah, that's the minimum energy performance. Um, now, one thing that's interesting is the, the floating HERS index rating. So what's new with LEED version 4 um, uh, is that it's, con it's hooked on Energy Star version 3. And so there's a floating HERS index rating. And so therefore, a home that has um, uh, less conditioned square footage and more bedrooms has to achieve a much higher, or should I say easier, HERS index rating uh, versus a home with less or more square footage and less bedrooms. Um, those have to be a little bit higher. So we typically say the average lead home is usually around 70, but again, that can float, I think, between 65, even 68 to 75, uh, depending on the home size adjustment factor, which is now only relevant to energy uh, in lead and not the rest of the credits. Okay, so that's the requirement. Going above and beyond the requirements and scoring more points in the rating system, you're gonna be looking at the LEED B, D, and CV4 energy and atmosphere credit, annual energy use, uh, where you can get up to um, 29 points for reducing energy. So pretty straightforward. Um, here's a table right here where it says, you know, starting at uh, having a HERS index of 70, uh, you automatically get five points, and then so all the way down to zero, uh, which is ideally a zero energy capable home, you're picking up 29 points um, uh, for, for, for achieving that zero and then everything in between. Um, and so that all has to be, at this point, currently has to be put in by you, the user, in the lead checklist. Uh, in the future, I believe they'll, 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 they'll deliver a more automated program. Um, the other thing is uh, um, the home size adjuster. So again, that uh, home size adjuster also adds more points. So again, if you have uh, less conditioned square footage, more bedrooms, um, for every you can earn one point for every 4% decrease in conditioned square footage. Um, otherwise, you also lose a point for every 4% increase in conditioned square footage. So again, home size adjustment does play a big role uh, in, your, in your energy. And then for multifamily buildings, home size includes only in unit space. Um, so I want to quick talk about option one here, and that is the lead energy budget. Uh, projects with major energy users not included in the HERS index must use the lead energy budget, which is an add-on to the, the REM rate reports. And I believe, and I'll check with, um, with, with Ziv here, but I believe uh, Ecotrope and, and all cloud-based programs Anything that uses HERS can produce a lead energy budget, budget addendum. But so anything, any major energy users like pools, spas, heated driveways, heated garages, um, they must use the, uh, the lead energy budget. And then the uh, lead program gives you these uh, bullet point contingencies that you have to use uh, to set up your baseline um, when you are using the lead energy budget. Um, the lead energy budget uh, has some other benefits to it as well. Um, you know, sometimes smaller homes get penalized in the HERS index rating um, and larger homes get rewarded. And so there are sometimes benefits if you're working with smaller homes to use the lead energy budget as opposed to the HERS index rating for your, for your score. Um, the other thing, and I, and I think this will contrast slightly with something Nick said earlier, and I'd be happy to have a conversation about that with you, Nick, if there's some time. But um, um, the, the reality is, and we've seen it with some projects, we recently just had a project, a 100% electric home, and they used the HERS index rating as their pathway, and um, they weren't scoring as many points as we thought they would. Um, they, they, um, and so we switched it over to the lead energy budget and actually found that they were more rewarded 
for their energy reduction uh, and accounting for that all electric. And so we still believe that there is some bias uh, towards natural gas, which at the time when HERS was developed, natural gas was cheap, uh, still is to some degree, and it was kind of the way to go. Electric was really expensive. And so um, we think there might still be some bias. Uh, that's just on a few different cases we've seen. But anyway, there's a video on USGBC's website to learn a little bit more um, about that budget. And then um, um, this is a snapshot, that image down there of a project we just almost recently certified, uh, negative 49 on the HERS index rating. Um, and so the house is a, is a power plant. But exemplary performance, um, you can earn more points in the lead rating system um, if you can do 100% or better compared to the lead energy budget and or your HERS index rating is a negative 10. So um, net positive home um, can earn that extra additional point. Uh, real quick, the Enterprise Green Communities Program, a program that's used for uh, single family, multifamily affordable housing, uh, pretty similar to LEED, um, certified to Energy Star version three, which again requires uh, a HERS index rating of, of uh, 70 to, to hit that target. And so, you know, if you're, if you're certifying to Energy Star, which is required, then you're hitting that HERS index rating of 70 for enterprise green communities. And then there are exemptions for substantial rehabs with buildings that are older than 1980 and have brick masonry facades. Um, those buildings are permitted to hit the um, HERS index of 100 as a worst case scenario because they are very difficult and expensive to renovate. And then kind of similar to Elite again, get additional credits for you reducing your HERS rating 5% or more beyond the threshold. So for new construction, your threshold starts with your Energy Star score at the top there. And then for every one point decrease, you can gain another point in Enterprise up to 12 points. For rehabs, it's a little bit different. You're actually um, gaining a point for every decrease from where the building's current HERS rating is. So if the building's current HERS rating is 150, it's really bad shape. Um, then you can actually get points lowering below the current HERS rating, not some, you know, not starting with 100 or 85, so uh, slightly different there. Um, and then just to wrap up here, the National Green Building Standard actually use, can use the HERS index rating, um, but it's fully based on cost analysis and not what the HERS number is. So if you're taking the performance pathway, um, you're going to be looking at those cost analysis, similar to what this cloud-based program offers and you're going to be scoring your points based on costs and, and not energy, um, which is a little bit different. Um, so with that, we got a lot of questions to get to. Hopefully you all can stick around. Uh, there's been some great conversation. Um, so thanks for bearing with us, but we've got some questions to get to and we want to take all your questions. We've got some time. Uh, for those of you listening live, um, check your email, uh, take the survey that pops up. Uh, there will be a uh, lead APH GBCI number reported to you, um, which is a little bit different than what we usually do. Um, so take that to report it, and then we'll report your AIA. Uh, for those of you listening on demand, make sure to take your quiz. And again, huge thanks to all of our members, Sun Intuitive, Self Tinting Glass, Niagara Conservation, Panasonic, Certainty to Renew, Serve by Build Equinox, our members, our board. Um, we couldn't do it without you. All right, guys, so with that, we do have uh, quite a bit of questions piling in here. Um, so the first one that I have is, um, uh, let's say I'm a building designer. Uh, I'm an architect. I'm a design build builder. Um, how can I utilize this program to help influence my design, um, you know, just if I want to use it to influence my design? Uh, to help me make sure I'm designing the most cost effectively for my clients. Um, you know, before I hand it off to a rater, or even if I end up using a rater, and then if I do hand it off to a rater, can there be an easy transition, you know, to that third party HERS index rater? Okay. Was... Hello? Yep, we're listening. Okay, so yeah, we were just kind of uh, cut off and then we just dialed in. Um, so I, I think I think I heard most of the question, and, and I'm just going to repeat just to make sure that I, I heard it correctly. The question is, um, as an architect or builder, how they can get control and make the smarter decisions um, without the rater's involvement or early enough in the process, even before the rater comes in, 
uh, how do they get control in making this, uh, these decisions? Is, is this correct? Yes. Okay. Right. So um, basically, um, we, um, oh, I mean, we, the, the, there are two dimensions to the answer. One is on the uh, ecotrop side, and one is on the on the technology side. Um, there is there is absolutely no you know mandatory need that uh, uh, the rater is involved in. Uh, in every phase of the decision, this kind of decision can be made, can be made uh, with the technology by the builder or by the architect themselves. Uh, having said that, uh, our experience, and, and, and by the way, the same thing with Ecotrop. So having said that, uh, our experience shows that um, um, you do want to have a rater involved in these kind of decisions because there are many corners or, or, or insights that, that goes beyond just running all the permutations and all the combinations. Uh, Raters might say that, you know, achieving ACH2 or ACH4, it might be challenging. I mean, there are some insights that can come from uh, the person who's going to end up creating their house. And uh, we, we strongly encourage people, you know, to uh, incorporate in this decision the, uh, the person who's going to end up certifying the houses that you build. So there are no surprises again because technology can just give you an answer that you might choose, but you want to uh, uh, have as part of the decision the uh, the person's going to end up saying, yeah, that 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 works. I will give you a certification using that uh, that that decision. So there is an opportunity for designers to use this tool um, prior to reaching out to raters. That was that correct? Um, I mean, um, currently with Ecotrop, um, because of our uh, focus on invitation, we we allow currently only raters to use the uh, the, uh, the rating software. Uh, it wasn't the case in the past. It might be different in the future. But if people choose to use that functionality to Ecotrop, um, they will need to go to the rater. Um, and I'm not I don't know about other tools that exist in the market that do the same thing. But in Ecotrop, it's just just our bandwidth. We just uh, prefer that it's be, going to be sold through the rater. Okay, so you have to have an established relationship with a rater who's active to, to utilize the software. With Ecotop, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, so the next question is, um, just to confirm this tool can rate up to uh, five-story multifamily mixed-use buildings. And then second, to add to that question, what about those working with commercial buildings? Can EcoTroop um, either now or in the future produce um, ash-free energy models. Right. So uh, um, this is where Nick and, and Rob can jump in. I mean, we we have a limit on our. Uh, um, I mean, first, every uh, thing. First, EcoTroop focuses on on residential construction. Uh, we are not doing commercial as of now. Uh, it is the plan to do it in the future, exactly when I don't know, but uh, for now we just focus on, on residential. Uh, and within residential, we have some limit on the uh, um, size of homes that we can um, um, be used on. And it's mainly driven by the, uh, you know, the HERS definition. So, uh, Nick, is it five stories or four stories? It's, it's three above grade stories, so you, you can also include a, a below grade story. But yeah, up to three stories above grade. So I know that, um, and, and Energy Star just recently released some more information to where um, they allow up to five-story buildings. It used to be five-story buildings that had decentralized systems. Now it's only five. So are you effectively saying that if um, a raider gets a project like that, um, your tool wouldn't be wouldn't be able to be used for that? So. Since Energy Star is using the HERS index, if, if they're saying that that's okay, then we would also allow that. Great, great. Um, so those uh, doing uh, renovations, um, can this tool be utilized to help with um, improvement plans and coming up with um, um, you know, the best, it sounds like you can do the best cost effective ideas for meeting codes and new builds, um, but how can it be utilized for doing, um, you know, pre evaluations of renovations and then coming up with cost effective plans for energy reductions um, um, for the rehab process? 
Sure. Um, it, it could, but it hasn't been designed with that in mind. So I, I wouldn't strongly recommend that folks use Egotrope for that today. Um, but it is something we will consider adding more functionality for in the future. Great. Um, what about those who uh, might have in their state um, something beyond the uh, the HERS index bullet points for their energy code requirements? Is there the ability for um, them to be able to, um, you know, have other information that they can look for? Um, within this tool if, the, if their code needs other information? Yes, we, we've been adding, so as, as we've gotten more raters in different states, we've been adding state-specific code requirements for each of them. And if your project is in a certain state, you will see that information and, and get the appropriate reporting for that state or municipality. Yeah, I mean, one of the, uh, um, Key benefits of uh, of web-based technology is that it makes the uh, this kind of additions uh, pretty easy, uh, and it's easy on both the uh, development side. As I said, there are tools that makes life much easier, but also on the uh, deployment side. So uh, um, I'm saying that because you know in, in the other tools, you know you may like to upload a new version, um, you know get you know have it shipped to you, put it on your machine. Um, it goes much faster with with web-based technologies simply because, you know, we do it behind the scenes, we update the version, next time you log in, boom, it's there. Um, so there was a question, and I, I, I think I know the answer, but maybe you can make sure that I've got it. So the question was about um, assessing total cost of ownership in regards to um, buying a new home uh, versus renovating an existing one. And considering just, not just um, you know your energy costs, but also your embodied energy of renovating versus building new, um, I suspect that um, that the answer is in itself because you know if a, if, a, if an older home costs less, um, but op costs more to operate energy-wise, um, and a newer home costs more uh, in the mortgage, but costs less to operate. Then, then, then there's the answer. Is there any more that you can add to that? Sorry, I didn't understand that last part of the question, Brett. Yeah, so the question is, um, can your system account for embodied energy in total cost of ownership? Um, embodied energy in, in the materials, you mean? Like, like yeah. UV? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it currently does not. Um, it is something that could be included in the future. So I guess would you agree with me then that the cost of ownership in embodied energy would be a cheaper existing home is cheaper because it exists, and a new home is more expensive because it's new. Is that could that be one way to look at that question? I I, I suppose yeah. I, I mean certainly. If it's already there, you don't need to build it. It doesn't require as much embodied energy. But the reality is we have, you know, this big housing stock that's pretty inefficient. And at some point, we need to either build new houses or renovate it anyway. Um, obviously, in your example, you'd be renovating. So you would hopefully reuse some, at least a lot of the, the building and also make it almost as energy efficient as the new house. But, you know, that that's on a case-by-case -case basis, which is, the the better thing to do, I suppose. Right. And, and by the way, this is the type of, I guess, the uh, conversation that we would love to have. I mean, we just show you guys one tool, which is the Eagle Talk tool. But uh, um, you know, if if people start to analyze things from that, you know, cost benefit perspective, and and you know, add functionalities where need to be added, that that that's great because people will ask the right the right questions. Um, so I, I think uh, I, I really like this kind of uh, discussion. Um, so REMRATE produces various different reports. One of them I mentioned was the lead energy budget. I know they produce a special report for the National Green Building Standard Certification and many other reports that break down data in various ways. Um, does your tool also generate those same reports? 
we generate most of them. We, we don't have all of the same reports that the Remrate does. We actually don't currently have that, that lead report you mentioned. Um, and, and we are we're working on that one and the natural the National Green Building Standard Report. Those will be in soon. Um, yeah, we're doing it as as our clients need need them essentially. Yeah, our uh, growth uh, um, strategy is that we um, and when we bring in new clients, we go ahead and and close the gaps of the reports that they need. And these two reports that you mentioned are just came in from one of our newest clients, and we are just working on them right now. But, um, and, and, and again, there, there's probably some other reports that we're submitting, and as soon as it's being raised by clients, we just go ahead and do it. Is that uh, total cost of ownership study available? Where, where can people find that? Um, I can, uh, if people um, send me a request, I can, I can send it. Then we can send it. Um, yeah. Well, why don't you send that out to me, and I can I can kick it out to everybody. Um, sure, I can. I'm happy to do it. It's uh, it's a pretty ex extensive study. I just took one slide, but uh, happy to send it over. Actually, we have uh, even more. We wrote um, a white paper that just took the uh, information, and put it into a you know kind of easier uh, fast uh, easier read, so I can send it this one as well. Might be more oh, yeah. interesting. Even better, yeah, yeah. I just something similar. So, well, great. Um, you know, we're 15 minutes over. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, I really want to thank uh, um, Ziv, Rob, and Nick here from EcoTrub for their time for taking us through this. And right before we wrap up, uh, Ziv, where can people um, find out more information if they want to contact you to learn more? Um, two best ways would be either to uh, email um, us at info at ecotrop.com or just go to our website, which is ecotrop.com. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, take care. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.